The Lord has risen from the dead, as he said. Let us all exult and rejoice, for he reigns for all eternity. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. This Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Francisco Xavier Herrera. And during this Mass, we also specially pray for the repose of the soul of Josephine Mother. And we also specially pray in thanksgiving for Nigel D'Souza and for the good health of Constancio Herrera. Dear friends, in all our lives, as followers of Christ our Lord, we are called to speak about Christ. It is only in speaking about Christ only can we bear witness to the risen Lord. All of us in the own baptism in Christ have been called to be his witnesses. In order to be his witnesses, we need to speak about him first and foremost. And in order to speak about Him, we need to have that loving encounter with the risen Lord. We see in readings today how the disciples and the women bear witness to the Lord by speaking about Him. In our lives, in our own conversations, how can we speak about Christ? And for those moments of our own failures, to speak about Christ our Lord. And for those moments of restricting our communication only to mere material things, we feel sorry and ask for God's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask just to be a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God the highest. On our earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who give constant increase to your church by new offering, Grant that your servants may hold fast in their lives to the sacrament they have received in faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven 
and addressed the crowd in a loud voice. Men of Israel, listen to what I am going to say. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God, by the miracles and portents and signs that God worked through him when he was among you, as you all know. This man, who was put into your power by the deliberate intention and foreknowledge of God, you took and had crucified by men outside the law. You killed him, but God raised him to life, freeing him from the pangs of Hades. For it was impossible for him to be held in its power since, as David says of him, I saw the Lord before me always, for with him at my right hand nothing can shake me. So my heart was glad, and my tongue cried out with joy. My body too will rest in the hope that you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to experience corruption. You have made known the way of life to me. You will fill me with gladness through your presence. Brothers, no one can deny that the patriarch David himself is dead and buried. His stone tomb is still with us. But since he was a prophet, and knew that God had sworn him an oath to make one of his descendants succeed him on the throne. What he foresaw and spoke about was the resurrection of Christ. He is the one who was not abandoned to Hades, and whose body did not experience corruption. God raised this man Jesus to life. And all of us are witnesses to that. Now raised to the heights by God's right hand, he has received from the Father the Holy Spirit, who was promised. And what you see and hear is the outcome of that Spirit. Thanks be to God. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Preserve me, Lord, I take refuge in you. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my God. Preserve me, O God, and take refuge in you. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever on my sight, since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. Preserve me, O God, and take refuge in you. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad, even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved no decay. Preserve me, O God, take refuge in you. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Preserve me, O God. 
take refuge in you. He stands to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Filled with awe and great joy, the women came quickly away from the tomb and ran to tell the disciples. And there, coming to meet them, was Jesus. Greetings, he said. And the women came up to him, and falling down before him, clasped his feet. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. They will see me there. While well, they were on their way, some of the God went off into the city to tell the chief priests all that had happened. These held a meeting with the elders, and after some discussion, handed a considerable sum of money to the soldiers with these instructions. This is what you must say. His disciples came during the night and stole him away while they were asleep. And should the governor come to hear of this, we undertake to put things right with him ourselves and to see that we do not get into trouble. The soldiers took the money and carried out the instructions. And to this day, that is the story among the Jews. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In life, we can bear witness to something good or something bad. In the Gospel, we see two kinds of people. On one side, we see the women who go on to tell about the risen Christ, something good. On the other side, we see the soldiers being instructed by the chief priests and elders to give a false witness. And I'm sure in all our circumstances in our everyday life, we may have encountered both ways. One side they may be a push to give witness to something good, on the other side they may be a push to give witness to something that is bad. It is only on how we react in our respond to situations that matters much in our life. And for us, as followers of the risen Lord, we are called to do something that is good. In the first reading today we see Peter proclaiming about the risen Lord very powerfully. I am sure all of us know from the Gospel accounts how he denied the Lord Jesus, telling that he doesn't know Jesus. However, after that personal encounter with the risen Christ after his resurrection, the same Peter who denied Jesus did not know about him, comes out powerfully and proclaims about Christ so powerfully. And what gave him the courage is nothing but the energy that he drew from the encounter with the risen Christ. And we see in the Gospel how the women had a beautiful encounter with the risen Lord. And the risen Lord sends the women out into the world to tell his disciples and bear a good witness. All of us, just like the women, are called and sent out into the world to proclaim the goodness of the risen Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, all of us these days communicate so
so much. And I am sure in our own isolated homes, we have plenty of time, plenty of opportunities to speak to people. I hear from many of our own parishioners that now they get so much of time to talk to their old school friends. And they have plenty of time to Zoom, to Skype with all their near and dear ones. And it is very important to examine how much in our conversations do we speak about the risen Lord. Jesus, our Lord, tells the women today, Go and tell my brothers. Go and tell my brothers. We are all called today to go and tell about Christ our Lord. In whatever circumstances we can. Of course, we cannot go out. We are staying at home. However, our words can reach out to the world. In our own day-to-day communications, my dear brothers and sisters, can we speak about Christ? If we can bear good witness to Christ our Lord, even through our own positive ways of speaking about Christ, it will surely be a blessing for all of us. There are also ways wherein we may tend to become bad witnesses of gossiping so much in our conversations. It is highly important to examine whether our conversations are filled with bearing good witness to Christ our Lord or are our conversations filled so much with so much of negativity. We ask God that He who inspired the women to encounter the risen Lord and go and tell about the risen Lord to others may also inspire us during this Easter season to know about Christ more and more, to encounter Him deeply and share about Him in our own everyday conversations. For this grace, we pray during this Holy Eucharist. During this Mass, we also specially pray for Antonio Fernandez, who is uh, very sick in the intensive care, especially pray for him that the risen Lord will touch him and heal him and strengthen him at this time. Blessed honor of God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for all.
pray their sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your acceptance, Church, and as you have given the cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to obtain you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome pastoral joy, every land, every people exerts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they appear. Holy In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Humbly we pray, 
the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Francisco Xavier Carrera and Josephine Walker, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with Saints Anselm, Ignatius of Loyola, Francis Xavier, John de Brito, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be poised to eternal life, and may praise and glory for you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious he grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith and graciously brought the peace and unity in accordance with your Lord, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign of peace.
Dear friends, there are times when people are unable to receive the body and blood of Christ through illness or due to their personal disposition. Even though some may not receive sacramental communion, all are united by the Holy Spirit. The traditional idea of spiritual communion is an important one to remember and reaffirm at this time. A deep spiritual communion is possible even when we do not share together the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ. As I recite this prayer, please make it your goal and welcome the Lord Jesus into your hearts. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself fully to you, now and forever. Amen. Christ, having risen from the dead, does now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. Let us pray. May the grace of this gospel sacrament abound in our minds, we pray, O Lord, and make those who are set on the way of eternal salvation worthy of your grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, rejoicing in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.